स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Okay, so in today's lecture, I am going to talk all about finding extremals. Okay, so now before I dive into finding extremals of functionals or talk about real problems of finding extremals in ca using calculus of variations, let us do a brief revision. So I am going to start. my topic today by describing extremals in finite dimensional calculus okay so students who have done primary courses in multivariate calculus vector calculus ordinary calculus they must be familiar with most of the results that i am going to talk over the next 25 to 30 minutes so let me start with uh you know real valued uh real valued uh functions of one variable real valued functions of one variable and how to find extremals for such functions now let me just define what do we mean by the extremal now extremals in real valued functions of one variable could either be maxima or minima so let us say we we talk about minima so let us say i have a point x and x is inside an interval which is part of the real axis and let us also define a function f of x f of x such that f of x f of x is a function from this interval a comma b to the set of all reals and if i have uh you know if my x if if my x is is the minima the minima or respectively if x is the maxima the definition goes simultaneously i must have that i must have that f of x must be less than equal to f of x hat for all x hat for all x hat in ab so that is the definition for x being the minima and similarly if x is the maxima this inequality is going to change around right so we will have the greater than equal to equal to inequality okay so if i have so if uh, so in this case my my x is known as the uh, the 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 local well sorry so in this case the x is known as the global the global minima respectively the global maxima x is known as the global minima respectively the global maxima of f of x on ab okay so suppose uh, so we can always describe that this uh, we can collect all such points where f attains the minimal value respectively respectively the maximal value and denoted by the minimal set so what i just said is the set the set of uh, points the set of points x such that my function my function f of x is minimum right when i say minimum i have described what do i mean by minimum right so the set of points x for which f of x is minimum or respectively maximum maximum is known as the minimal set
is known as the minimal set. Okay. So, so what I have is uh, well, so so far I have described uh, what do I mean by the global minima or global maxima. So, in terms of the definition, uh, if I have to write a proper math definition of a minima, uh, well, uh, that's the definition of the global minima. Similarly, if I have to write a proper definition of the local minima, then we need to look at points which are interior to the interval. So, if I have an interior point, if I have an interior point x such that such that x is in a b, then there exists a delta such that there is a delta positive with the condition that the value of the function at evaluated at x is the minimum among all the values of the function evaluated at all other points x hat inside a small interval around x right then i call that my point x is is the local minima right so so we see that the definition of the global minima follows the comparison of the function follows the comparison of the function with all such values possible over the entire interval while the definition of the local minima follows the comparison of the values of the function inside a small interval around the point under consideration. And similarly, we can describe the same definition using local maxima. Right? Okay. So, so, if I were to draw a figure explaining all these uh, concepts quickly, let us say I am describing a function over an interval a b as shown above and let us say this is my function f of x a function of one variable we see that we see that these are my points which are so these are my points which are local maxima and this is a point which is local minima while we see that uh, we see that well this point is is above this well but this point is has the lowest value so this will be a point on the boundary which is also the global minima because the value of the function attained at this point is the lowest among all such possible points while finally this particular point is local maxima right so so in short finding local extremals we can always look around the points we can always look around the, the neighborhood of those points while for finding the global extrema we have to compare the value of the functional at all the points inside the interval over which the function is defined okay so then let us now start uh, uh, describing the tests for finding the extremals so so the so in particular let us describe the necessary condition the necessary condition uh, for for local extrema right so we are only going to describe the necessary condition for local extrema and then when we compare the boundary values with these with these local extrema we get the necessary we get the global extrema when we include the boundary values Okay, so, the necessary condition for students who have uh, done classes in multivariate calculus they all know that the necessary condition has to be the derivative of f of x with respect to x has to be equal to 0 right and that can also be shown using a very simple result in the form which I state in the form of a theorem. So, the theorem says let f let f be a real valued let f be a real valued 
uh, function differentiable real valued function differentiable on the open interval real valued function differentiable on the open interval i and if I have that f has a local extremum at x equal to i, then I must have that f prime of x is 0. And again the, the proof of this result also follows very in a very straightforward manner because let us uh, to, to show the, the, the result to prove the result let us assume without loss of generality. So, without loss of generality assume that x x is the local max right we can prove similarly for local min right. So, so in this case it means that f of x must be greater than equal to f of x hat for all x hat inside the interval around x inside a small interval around x right epsilon being positive. So, so which means that my inequality f of x hat minus f of x must be less than equal to 0 or or uh, so which means that uh, so, let us now consider another uh, uh, another related limit. So, we consider we consider the following limit limit x hat tending to x of the ratio f of x hat minus f of x divided by x hat minus x. We know that in this ratio the numerator is always negative. However, depending on the denominator this ratio could be positive or negative. In particular, if I have that x hat is greater than x that is it lies on the right of x then this ratio will be non positive. Otherwise, if x hat lies on the left of x this will be non negative right. Now, we, we know that f is a real value differentiable function. Since f is differentiable we must have that this limit exists right. So, let me call this this as 1. So, so since f is differentiable I must have that limit limit in 1 described in 1 should exist or in in summary both the values the limit whether going from the left or com, coming from the left sorry coming from the right or coming from the left must be equal to each other and that can only happen that can only happen if this limit is equal to 0 right because that is the only common value from the left or from the right and i we all know that this particular limit is the derivative of the function f with respect to x and hence the result follows so so what is the moral of the story here so, the moral of the story is that for 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 a smooth function for a smooth function in the interval for a smooth function in the interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon I have that f of x hat I can well what I am trying to do is that for for any smooth function f of x i am trying to rewrite the function around the around the neighborhood of the point x using taylor series expansion okay so so i am using the result by by taylor's taylor's expansion so i know that if x is x hat is in the neighborhood of x i can always represent f of x hat in terms of f of x as follows right. So, that is the, the first term and let me write one more term and then 
the rest will follow similarly. Okay. So, where, where what we have done is my quantity epsilon eta is x minus uh, well has to be x hat minus x. So, so suppose suppose uh, what I have is that x is the local max. So, suppose x is my local max then I know that there are two pieces of information I know that f prime x must be 0 because x is an extremum and also f of f of uh, f of uh, x hat minus f of x must be less than equal to 0 because x is the local max right and that from these two information it follows that that for sufficiently small for sufficiently small epsilon the leading order term in this Taylor's expansion is the second order term and from here we conclude that f double prime of x must be less than or equal to 0 right. In fact, for local max we, we keep it strictly less than 0 right. Now, similarly we can show this a similar result for x being the local min we can conclude that in this case f double prime x must be greater than 0. Okay. So, so from here we get the so called sufficient condition for the existence of the extremals. So, the previous slides I showed the necessary condition and in this slide I am highlighting the sufficient condition and of course, I could always have I could always have that the second derivative of f with respect to x could be 0 and then we have to start again we have to start our analysis like the one done above starting from the third order terms onward from order epsilon cube terms onwards. Okay. So, so let us now quickly you know uh, recapitulate our uh, revision using some examples that I have uh, compiled. So, the first example is let us uh, look at a function f of x. So, f of x is x square sin 1 by x where x is non 0 and let us say this is 0 when x x is equal to 0 right. So, so, I know that f is differentiable uh, this this particular example shows it is easy to show that f is differentiable for all x except perhaps at x equal to 0 right. So, we can show that f is f is differentiable for all x real valued and in fact, we can further we can further show that f is also differentiable at 0 using our definition via the limit and the derivative at 0 is is 0. So, it turns out that 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 0 is a stationary point 0 is a stationary point right. Okay. So, then what I have is let us say that f double prime of x we, we when we try to calculate the second derivative of the function at 0 we see that it does not exist. All the students who are going through this exercise should do this assignment to see that the second derivative of the function at 0 does not exist which means which means that well it does not exist people can check that uh, that is because while calculating the second derivative we have to evaluate this limit sin of 1 by x at x going to 0 and we all know that this does not exist. Okay. So, that creates the problem. Okay. Well, that 
that does not prevent us to figure out what is the nature of the stationary point. Right? We know that 0 is a stationary point, but the second derivative test will not work because, because we can see that the second derivative does not exist. However, we see that f is a square of a real valued function x square times sin square 1 by x. So, whatever be the value of x, we know that f of x will be non-negative, which means that the lowest value of f will be will be 0 and that is attained at x equal to 0. Right? So, 0 is my minima. So, what I said is the following, we, we note that f of x is greater than equal to 0 for all x in r and this means that x equal to 0 is a local minima because only at 0 the function attains the lowest possible value which is 0 right and in fact it is also the global minimum because that is the minimum value that the function can take okay so here is let us look at quickly look at another example so let us consider f of x to be absolute value of x right so we see that uh, we, we know that this function is differentiable for all x except at x equal to 0, right. So, it is differentiable for all x which are uh, all real values of x except at 0 and further we can see that the derivative of f of x is either minus 1 if x is negative or it is plus 1 when x is positive which means that which means that there is no extrema, no well I would say no local extrema because the first derivative is never 0. Right? However, we know that we know that f at 0 is 0 right? and we also know that f, f is always a non negative uh, real valued function. So, which means that from these two uh, observations we can conclude that 0 is a local as well as a global minima. Okay. So, this is just some basic problems with which we are revising at the moment. Let us quickly again look at another example. Well, a simple case could be let us say f of x is e to the power x. Now, this exponential function has derivatives of for all orders, however, it never vanishes, none of the derivative vanishes, which means that there would not be any local extrema. Right? So, this so f nth derivative is never 0, well all I need is the first derivative. So, so f first the first derivative of the function with respect to x is uh, is not 0 and from here we can conclude that there is no local extrema right so our derivative test won't work on this function okay so to summarize what we have so far seen in our revision topics what we have seen is are the following basic points in order to find a global or local extrema, what we see that if, if I have an interior point, if I have an interior point x, if I have an interior point x which is a global extremum, then this interior point will also be a local extremum. Okay. Now, then if I have an interior point which is let us say uh, well if I have an interior point x which is also global or even local extrema 
then for an interior point it is always necessary that the first derivative will vanish. So, whether it is local or whether it is global for an interior extrema the first derivative of the function will always vanish. Finally, for for points in in closed domain for points in closed domain with with boundary points included right we see that if the, the, the values of f at the boundary points must be checked with the values at the interior points to evaluate the extrema. So, what I just said is the following for points in a closed domain with, with boundary points included the values of f of x for boundary points for boundary points must be must be checked with the values the values of the interior extremum extremum to figure out the global values to figure out the global extremum right. So, this is the basic gist of our finite dimensional calculus and we can similarly extend this one variable calculus to several variable calculus as follows. So, so let me let me well let me term our first case to be case A and we can go to look at the second case as case P that is the case with functions functions of several variables functions of several variables x bar is x 1 x 2 x n being in R n. Okay. So, like in the function uh, similar to the, the observations in functions of one variable to figure out the extremum for functions of several variables we must have that the first derivative of these functions must vanish at each uh, the, at the first derivative taken with respect to each component. So, what I just said is to find the critical points or the stationary points to find the stationary points let us say x bar which is now a vector in this case are found by setting up the following constraints the first derivative of the function at with respect to each of the individual component variables must vanish right. So, this this result is consistent with functions of one variable or in short we say that the gradient of the function is 0 right and and this this result again follows follows from from this one and the one that I am going to just describe uh, follows from our Taylor series expansion. Okay. So, uh, then the next result is how about the sufficient condition right. So, the sufficient condition what we saw was for functions of one variable the sufficient conditions led to finding the second derivative of the functional function and checking the sign if the sign is negative then local max sign is positive then local min. So, similarly the sufficient condition for local uh, min or local max simultaneously it must be that the hessian matrix the hessian matrix which are which are the matrices involved using let us say the the first derivatives sorry the second derivatives with respect to the variables right and so on. Uh, let, let me let me uh, denote this matrix in the shorthand notation del 2 f del x i del x j. So, this is my matrix which is in the shorthand notation a matrix of order n cross n of size n 
and if this hessian matrix is is positive definite this hessian matrix is positive definite then then i have found the condition for local minimum simultaneously for local maximum it must be negative definite right so what do i mean by positive definite so a matrix is positive definite if if all eigen values are of the matrix are positive all eigen values are positive and similarly if i have a negative definite matrix it implies that all eigen values must be negative okay so all we need to check to figure out the sufficient condition is to check the eigen values of the associated matrices that are found by evaluating this hessian at the critical points okay okay so i i think at this point the revision for the finite dimensional calculus is over